Okay, good morning. It's Lee, WW2DX, and uh, this morning we're going to do a quick video on, well, how quick it will be, but we're going to do, basically show you how to set up for 2 meter EME. So at our W2 Jefferson uh, location, we've installed a, uh, basically 64 elements on 2 meters. You can see a photo here, in the bottom right corner. These are four 16 element long boom Yaggies. Uh, optimized for 2 meter EME and what we're going to do is set up WSJTX running a Q65 uh, mode which is going to be I think the mode that's going to dominate um, uh, from this point moving forward it's been JT65 but this new mode of Q65 60A is going to probably be much better so we're going to focus on that one uh, today Plus, that'll be the mode that I run uh, when I'm over on CY0 um, in a few days here. So hopefully we can work some of you guys um, with the station. So I, I connected to Jefferson. I just normally just went to 2 meters in the pull-down list here. And we can see the EME array is pointing at 225. It's on the horizon at 1 degree elevation. And if we look down here, um, at the bottom right of the uh, rotor control quadrant here, we can see there's a button that says Moon Track. And in, in uh, brackets here, we can see the current location of the moon. So 190 degrees azimuth, 19 degrees elevation. <clears throat> so the moon is on its path of setting here. So and conditions are not that great. Uh, currently, but let's see what happens. So all we have to do is click track moon here And we're gonna see these two numbers here change so we can see now the Yagi's turning To 190 and we see the elevation is climbing And so we're gonna get up here to about 190 and 19 degrees somewhere in there pretty close 188 16 18, okay so now that the array is pointing at the moon, let's go ahead and fire up WSJT. And let's grab WSJTX. This is going to be running on the Mac, obviously, but be a little. It's very similar on the on the PC. We have tutorials on setting up. Uh, if you follow the uh, FT8 um, tutorial, it's the same same process. Okay, so I have to uh, fire up a couple pieces of uh, software here on the Mac. Sm basically, the equivalent of Smart DAX and Smart Cat. So, uh, get these guys running here. Um, okay, let's get our receive streams going. Okay. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> so we can see we have an audio stream here, uh, and we are reading the frequency of the radio, 144, 144, okay, yep, that's good, okay, I'll just pick one, I'll pick this frequency, and we're going to make sure, so currently we're on JT65B, you can see down here we're going to go Q65. Uh, Q65, 60A, and we're going to turn off uh, SH, and let's see here, yeah, I'm turn off SH here, alright, so we have our pan up here, so it's over, one thing we can do is check to see um, where is there's anything going on here on and it's pretty quiet. There's not much happening. There's no spots on the moon. Any bands. So I fear that conditions are probably pretty poor. You see the moon. Okay, well. Let's just go through the motions here, so at least you can see how this stuff is set up. Um, 
For setup of WSAT, this will be similar on the PC as well. Again, it's in the FTA tutorial, but um, you can see the rig is set to Flex Radio 6000 series, local host, port 5002, cat for the PTT method, and data packet, and I use fake it uh, for the split operation. And in your audio, um, obviously pick your audio uh, DAX and cat lines, a little different here on the Mac, but uh, that's again, follow the tutorial. I think the rest of the stuff, you got to make sure your grid square is correct for the station you're connected to. In this case, we're at FN22, which you can see in the console right here. Every station has the grid square posted. And you need to make sure that that's set in WSGT, so the proper grid is sent when you're making a contact. So that's here. You can see the different boxes here that I have selected. You can check these out and set them to however you want to. Um, so we have our radio, we have our audio, um, in advanced, uh, not much else here. I don't think we have to mess around with. Mm, yeah, it's fine. Okay, good, good, good. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and you know when things are working, when you see this basically same frequency, there's a little bit of a bug here. You can see I'm on 145, 996, it's 146, but... I'll just bring this down here. It should track along, which it does. Okay, and then let's go ahead and um, we have our generate uh, call box generation here. We got our CQ WW2DX FN22 box at the bottom, and I'm going to transmit. Uh, we could leave it at first. It's fine. Typically, uh, when the European window is uh, available, meaning we share the moon with uh, the Europeans, they will always trans uh, transmit first. Um, we will transmit second. And I believe once the moon goes into the North America and Asia window, we transmit first. Um, typically. Not always, but typically. Okay, we're at Q6560A, 144, 144. Just pick a random frequency here in the, in the EME window, which is typically 144, 100 to 145, typically. And <clears throat> let's go ahead and just send some CQs here. So we're just going to click Enable CQ. And we are transmitting. We can see uh, 750 watts. And if we want to listen to our transmit tone, we can hit the monitor here. Turn the monitor on. And we can listen to our TX. I posted a few. Uh, we'll do this after I transmit CQ a few times. I, the chances of working somebody are pretty slim because the conditions are not very great, uh, good currently. But in the station tab, if you come into station tab, I posted some useful two meter frequencies. Um, showing you the EME window, the FT8 frequency, um, you know, different frequencies on two meters. So I've been calling frequencies or a few beacons uh, you can um, uh, hear at the station and the APRS frequency. So uh, just to see if you want to make sure things are working properly. Obviously, if you go to 144.390 and check these beacons and you hear them, then you know things are, are working as expected. We'll call CQ another, another time here. Just to go through the motions, um, I highly doubt that we'll get a deep, we'll get a spot on the live CQ website because there's probably nobody. Um, let's see, is there anybody? No, there's nobody actually um, watching the moon and decoding it. Unfortunately, we can see the spots. The last 25 spots. Um, Looks like a few days ago is when the real activity was happening here. You can see all the DX calls on the moon here. Yankee Bravo 2, a DJ, IK, R6, UAs, SQ, so HB9. So if you're new to 2 meters and new to moon, you can work. You can start racking up the DXCC count pretty quickly, uh, especially with this array. Okay. 
We're going to transmit for about 50, I think it's 52 or 53 seconds. You can see here, 50, 40, 51, 52, 53. Okay, 52 seconds. Uh, then we process and decode uh, for the remainder eight seconds or so. And then we will listen for the next sequence. Okay, so I think with the conditions are are pretty poor we're not going to expect uh, a call back here we would probably start to see a trace uh, let's just wait and see what this is mm, no just noise you could check out my other EME video I have another EME video where I made some contacts um, with the setup and that'll show you the actual receive tones and what it looks like coming off the moon and how I decode them Almost looks like there might be somebody here, but I think that's just noise, I think. Sometimes they can be this weak. You can start to see this very faint vertical line in here. And that's typically the sync tone. But I, I have a feeling this is just noise. Yeah, there's no decodes or anything. Let's just make sure that... Um, nobody's posting anything here. Nope. Okay. All right. I'm going to uh, stop the transmitter here. Just hit the halt button. All right. And let's go ahead and just go up the band a bit. Let's go to, let's get rid of WSJT. And let's go to upper sideband. Let's scroll out the page a little bit. Pan. Okay, and as we look here, we can see, oh, there's a signal here. It looks like another weak signal in here. Why don't we click on this one? Okay, so there's um, beacon here. We can see another, looks like another weak one here. Oh, we saw there's something was happening right here on sideband. Something, I'll keep an eye on that. So we come over here. We can hear a weak tone. And that's going to be uh, 144.299, so that's going to be... The W3 CCX beacon FN21, so we can come over here and go FN. We can go off the track, click Don't Track Moon, type FN21 now. Whoops, that's not what I want. FN21. And now it will drop the, it'll spin the Yagi to FT, uh, FN21. And we should see this beacon get stronger. Here it comes. FN21, uh, BE, FN21, BE, oh yeah, it's a little bit further to the west. Yep, yeah. we're getting louder, a little bit of noise too in that direction. And you can see some faint sideband in here. See these slight traces right here? So there's some sideband in there as well. I got the beacon definitely got stronger. S9 now. Yeah. And usually there's a group um, in the mornings on... Uh, 144.205 sideband and they're over to the south um, to the southeast in Connecticut typically they're all up along the eastern seaboard but um, so if we go to say the K1FO beacon so FN31 QG let's do FN31 QG let's bring the array that in that direction Oh, there's some sideband here now. Oh, here we go.
Looks like I went a little bit too far. Let's go uh, 150 maybe. audio artifact there, which could be multi-path. It almost sounds like Aurora. Oh, the A is 17. <laughs> okay, yeah. So what you're hearing is his signal is, is in Aurora here, so... Oh, I didn't realize we had a disturbance, so yeah, so that's we're hearing Aurora on his signal. Oh yeah, this is that. Wow. Interesting. So there you go. Um, just just a quick tutorial. Just want to show you how to set up WSJT. Um, but basically, um, when we move into better moon conditions, which are going to happen here um, shortly, um, and I'll post a page on the knowledge base on all this stuff. Oh, there's somebody. On CQ on CW. W1 RKS. So, okay, so you can see there's quite a lot of activity here terrestrially on two meters. Um, and there's actually a lot of FT8 uh, activity as well. And of course, we have FT8 built right into the console, so you can s literally select FT8 here and point the direction you want, and you'd be working 2-meter FT8 terrestrial contacts as well, so that works really, really nice. Great, so like I said, I'll post some stuff in the uh, knowledge base on more, you know, like website links and, and, and that sort of thing, um, and uh, we hope you enjoy uh, the new 2-meter EME array and 2 meters in general. Um, we've got some bigger plans coming. But uh, we want to see if uh, you guys enjoy uh, the, the moon bounce experience. 73, late WW2DX.